wasn't it? It can only get better, folks. It can only get better. Hello, it's great to be back. My name is Paul Metcalf, and welcome to another Contemporary Art Fairs Live. And this is our special launch evening, and it really is very special because um, you guys have been invited along for a little taster, a little bit of a chance to whet your appetite for tomorrow's main event. Now, the main event is running from uh, 2 p.m. Uh, till 4 p.m. Uh, GMT. So if you haven't registered, we're going to I'm going to launch the chat box so I can see what's going on out there. Uh, we're going to pop some uh, information in there for you to register to get involved. It's a free event. There's loads of stuff going to be happening. We've got music. We've got live art demonstrations. We've got top artists and sculptors to talk to you. We've got lectures, Q&As. And for the first time, we are going to be giving away some prizes. Now, we're not just going to give out prizes just like that. Oh, no, you have to stay with us throughout the entire event and throughout the day we will be giving out prizes as we go along and you have to be there oh yes you can't just register in and then go and get a coffee you have to stay with us you could bring your coffee back of course but uh, you have to stay with us uh, throughout the event so that we can uh, let you know that you are a winner so when you're a winner we know you're in the chat room we know you're there we know you're watching and then we will send that prize to you so that's all happening tomorrow between two and 4 p.m lots of fun there also don't forget you can follow everything that's happening with the contemporary art fairs um on facebook twitter and Instagram, that's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we'll put those links in the chat for you as well, at Contemporary Art Fairs. And also, if you understand the old hashtag thing and you wanna tell everybody about these events that are happening, then it's hashtag CAF, that's capitals, Surrey Spring. That's a hashtag a CAF Surrey Spring, if you wanna let everybody know about these events. Um, also, we've got a little bit of a running order in there telling you exactly uh, what's going to happen uh, here this evening but back to tonight and we do have a, a packed uh, evening for you as I said this is our special launch evening uh, to get you ready uh, for tonight's event uh, tonight well let me tell you what's coming up you can see it in the uh, the menu there shall, uh, if you can see it it says we've got a talk from uh, two award-winning artists. We've got Beverly uh, Sweetum and Greg Ward. They'll be here. We've got a live art demonstration with artist Sarah Sherwood, Sarah Sherwood, sorry, uh, along with live music from cellist Emily Burridge. And I heard the rehearsals this afternoon, and that is one definitely not to be missed. Uh, but to start us off, uh, we're gonna have a few words from our director, Joanne Chon, who is there. Joanne, if you are there with us, uh, it's gonna say just a few words to welcome you to this very special evening. Let's. Joanne, are you there? Hello, Paul, can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, I'm not. I'm just trying to fix the camera. <laughs> That's all right. Let's see if we can. Uh... Well, while you're doing that, I'll... oh, there hello there. Thanks, Paul. Thank you very much. Hello, all. Many thanks for joining us this evening. I'm Joanne Chon, and I'm the fair director for Contemporary Art Fairs. I'd like to start by thanking my team, the artists, the guests, and everyone involved for all their support and commitment to make this online fair possible. We hope you will enjoy the next few hours and don't forget to visit our website where you can see and purchase the fantastic artwork on display from over 60 artists. We look forward to welcoming you in person at our fair, our fair later this year. Thank you and enjoy the show. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Joanne. Brilliant Thank stuff you. there. As you know, we are, of course, in the virtual world, so things don't always go according to plan. We, we Sometimes our cameras disappear or sound doesn't come in, so do bear with us this evening. I'm sure we shouldn't have too many problems. We have done this before, but uh, these things happen. Now, every year when we get involved with the Contemporary Art Fairs, the Princess Trust Charity are very, very close by to us. Uh, they have always worked closely with the Contemporary Art Fairs. Uh, right now, we're joined by Sophie Hardy, uh, to have a little chat with us. I do believe I can see Sophie and you should be able to unmute so we can have a hey, Paul. Hi, everybody. Hi, Sophie. Very good. So it's very important, the uh, Princess Trust, and you're here to tell us more. 
Yeah, absolutely. So hi, everybody. My name is Sophie Hardy and I work for the Prince's Trust. I am the Million Makers lead. If you guys haven't heard of Million Makers, Million Makers is the UK's biggest entrepreneurial challenge. So firstly, I'd like to say a massive thank you to the Contemporary Art Fairs for having us here tonight. The Contemporary Art Fairs are a huge partner for the Prince's Trust. We've been working with you guys for over 15 years, since 2005. And in that time, they have raised £88,000 for the Prince's Trust. So they consistently provide us with ongoing support for young people and help us change young people's lives across the UK. So today I'm here to bring to life the work that we do as a charity and highlight why your support tonight is so important. So if you guys don't know about the Prince's Trust, um, we are the UK's leading youth organisation. We have been running since 1976. It says it in the name, Prince Charles is our president and we were founded by him in this year. And the charity has supported one million young lives since we're set up, which is absolutely incredible. And we have an ambitious new target to support one million young people over the next 10 years. So we want to get to supporting two million young lives. And that's why partners like the Contemporary Art Fairs are so, so important in helping us achieve our goals. So first of all, what do we do? We believe that every young person matters, um, no matter what their back background is, no matter what their circumstances, every young person should have the opportunities to succeed in life and we work with young people from the age of 11 to 30 year olds um, who are unemployed they might be living in care they might have be, um, committed crimes or be in trouble with the law they may have mental health issues they may be on the streets you know they may have a master's degree it doesn't matter what their background is they come to us they want support we will support them and I'm delighted to say that three out of four young people that work with us come out with a positive outcome when they've worked with the Prince's Trust. And when I say positive outcome, I mean they may be in employment, they may be training for a new job, or they may go back into education when they come to us. So that is a really fantastic outcome and shows the impact of working like charities like the Prince's Trust has on young people across the UK. So we provide young people with courses or practical support as well. So people might come to us and they say, you know what, we want to go back into you know, education. We want to go back to school and complete our GCSEs. Or they may come to us and say, we're nowhere near work ready. We've got really bad anxiety. We can't get out of bed in the morning. And we give them those life skills, that confidence to go into that positive outcome um, when they've come through the charity. So as you can imagine, our support is vital, particularly through this pandemic. One in eight young people in the UK are currently not in education, employment or training. And 38% of the young people that come to us are leaving school without GCSEs, which is an incredible amount of young people. And many of these young people are struggling with factors that are out of their control. So they may have a volunteer, you know, volatile family life, they may have emotional well-being problems, or they may be in care or leaving care. The amount of young people that I've met um, volunteering on our programmes um, that say to me things like, you know, I don't have a family, I don't have anyone that cares for me, my parents are alcoholics, but every time I seem to meet young people, they seem to have these issues which, you know, is well out of their control. And a lot of these young people have not benefited from the support earlier in life that some of us on here may have taken for granted in the past. Um, and they don't have people to help them with their homework. They don't have encouragement from parents every morning. Um, and they may not even, you know, they may have never been told they can achieve something in life. So when there is so much uncertainty um, with the pandemic, with the, you know, the rising pressures from social media, it's no wonder that mental health issues are on the increase and young people are unhappier than ever before. So a really interesting piece of research, which you guys may have seen in The Guardian, The Telegraph, it's something called the Youth Index. And this is a report that's done every year that shows the impact of our support, but also where young people are at with their lives in the UK. So I picked out a couple of highlights for you guys tonight, um, which I find really interesting. Um, and one of them is that 65% of young people don't feel in control of their lives and 20% of young people 
um, in the UK have felt suicidal during the current pandemic. Um, and in terms of the 65% of young people that don't feel in control of their lives, that has increased by 12% last year. So we see ourselves as a key UK organisation in support, you know, in ensuring that young people get the support they need through this period. And it's only supporters like you guys tonight on today's event that we can really do this. So I really hope I've highlighted how important your support uh, support is tonight and furthermore with the Prince's Trust. Thank you so, so much for joining tonight and choosing to support the Prince's Trust. You're giving young people a chance to succeed in life that they may never have had if you guys didn't support them. So thank you so much for having me on tonight's event. Enjoy the rest. I hope you've got a nice glass of wine with you or a nice beverage and have an amazing weekend. Thank you, Sophie. That's brilliant. No, you're so right. And I don't know if you know, Sophie, this is very exciting. Oh, she's gone. She's gone. And I wanted to have a quick chat with her. Uh, oh, you're still there. Good. Um, is this year, and we are excited about this, that a minimum of £50 at every piece of art that's sold, we've never done this before, will go, that money will go to the Princess Trust. That's good, isn't it? That's absolutely fantastic. And just to give you guys an example of how much money we need to support a young person, £1,000 supports a young person into education, employment and training. So £50 will make such a big difference to that. So thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Sophie. Appreciate that. Take care. I just thought we needed to know that. So, yes. So now you know all about... Um, thank you, Sophie. Lovely stuff. Always a pleasure to have Sophie here. She's been with us uh, many years here at Contemporary Art Fairs, popping up to tell us all about uh, the Princess Trust. And they do do some incredible work. So, and it, as I said, it's great that we can really support them this year. We normally donate a lot of money towards them. But this year, as I say, we've never done this before. A uh, minimum of £50 at every piece of art uh, that on that website that we're going to talk about shortly. Um, that will go to that incredible charity. So there you go. So you can buy something um, for yourself, a gift for somebody else, and really think you're making a difference. Anyway, talking about the website, that's what we're going to talk about right now. If you've never attended the Contemporary Art Fairs before, do not panic. It's really simple. Now, normally you would be arriving in your car, parking up, paying your parking fee or whatever, and making your way inside. Well, of course, we're virtual now, but we want to try and make it fun uh, for you to enjoy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to show you a little video, and I'm going to take you through how simple and how easy it is to purchase the art uh, on the website. So you can see the link in the chat there. Uh, that's the chat. And it's all going on sale. People are asking, when does it go on sale? In fact, Lisa has asked, when do the artworks go on sale? The Princess Trust mini canvases are look available, but all the other artwork seems to be browse only. Well, it should be live right now. I'm going to speak to Effie and make sure that's happening. And while we do that, shall we have a look at this video? And then I can quickly tell you, it's not very long. So we'll quickly show you, if you've never done it before, how we can browse the website, look at the different art that is there. Do we have that, Effie? Hopefully we should have that shortly. I'm going to be sharing that with you. There we go. So here we are, the art fairs that you are at right now. And that's the main website. So you've got the main website there. We're going to be, when we finish this presentation, everything will be live for you to look at. And that's where you register for tomorrow's event. So if you want to register for tomorrow's event, you can. As I said, it starts um, at two o'clock and goes right through till four. And that's GMT, because we know we have people watching from across the globe, which is always nice. And that's all the information, all the art, uh, all the artists that are on, all the performers that are on um, tomorrow. We do have a packed lineup there, as you can see. And that's where we were talking about the Princess Trust canvases. So they are available uh, for you to view. All the money of those canvases goes to the Princess Trust. And they're like a mini work of art. We love those. They're always very popular. I have to say, on the last show we did, they sold out very, very quickly throughout the day. And then you've got all the artists. You can search the fair, uh, fair by artist or by the medium. So whatever style you'd like to look at, or you could look at the artist, they're in alphabetical order there. So you can click on the artist that you want to see uh, more of their work. These are just examples that we're showing you here. These might not actually be available on the site, uh, but maybe you want to find out a bit more about the artist. If you click into the artist, there'll be like a little biog at the top. 
and then you've got some information there. So if you need more information, we'll tell you how to do that as well. It'll also display the artwork that's available and you can send a question to the artist if you want. And this is all the artworks that they're exhibiting at the fair at the time. As I say, these are just examples. These aren't the ones that are there at the moment. Very shortly, the website will be live for you to go and have a look at what's actually there. It's exciting, isn't it? It's like popping around and having a look. So for example, you'd go in there and you'd take a look at the artwork. You could read a description on the piece that you're looking at. And then you can add it to your basket if you want to. Uh, if it says price includes shipping, brilliant. But obviously, if you're an international buyer, and we do have a few, then you may need to contact uh, for shipping information. The price includes shipping. You can buy it right there. But if you want information on the uh, in shipping and it's not included, click on the link. We'll contact the artist and we'll let you know what the price of that is. And you've got all the different work here. In this case, if the artwork is going to a UK address, uh, you can buy it straight away. But if it doesn't, click on this box for the shipping costs. I will get you a quote for that. Now, a lot of people know this already. I know people are thinking, we know all this. We want to get on with the, the night. But some people don't. So it's always good to go through this and say it's only a few minutes and then we'll get on with tonight's uh, main event. So if you acquire international shipping, you can click there for that quote. And then the artist will get back to you with the quote for delivery. As I say, these are just examples. So you think, oh, I like that. <laughs> it might not be available. There are some amazing pieces this year. I have had a sneaky look on there as well. Uh, if an artwork has already been sold, do not panic because you can do a thing called a waiting list. So you click on the box. Pending, uh, pending final approval. Uh, and if, for example, some reason it, the sale falls through, which does happen sometimes, uh, or there might be another piece available, we can get back in touch with you and say, oh, by the way, that piece you're interested in, it didn't sell. Are you still interested? And then we'll email you to let you know it's available, which is quite exciting. And that does happen. So don't think, because if your piece is gone, don't get too disheartened. And you can contact the artist anytime and they'll send you a message. And you can do that on the artist page. So the page we looked at earlier, the artist page, uh, do you need more information? You pop your name in there, the subject to your email, uh, your question, and they will get back to you. And there you go. That's what it's all about. So thank you very much for that. So uh, the website, I should be finding out right now, is it all live? I put my finger in my ear like I've got an earpiece in and I'm not wearing one tonight. So uh, Effie is going to have to let me know if it's all live and ready to go. Oh, we're having a go. Oh, right, we're just a slight delay on the site, but we will we'll let you know as soon as that is up and ready to go. But back to uh, this evening. So now on with our first performance of the night. So tonight we're going to combine an international virtuoso cellist with a very talented artist. Now we did this uh, in our last uh, contemporary art fairs and it was very, very popular. In fact, it's the perfect time Friday evening to grab yourself, um, as Sophie said earlier, maybe a little glass of wine or a nice coffee so you can settle down and really enjoy the art. Uh, also, straight after this, we are going to have a Q&A. Now, that means we're going to ask some questions and we'd love some questions after you. We're totally live. We're totally interactive. And that's the great thing about doing these interactive shows. Um, so if you want to ask a question, you can see the chat box. Now, if you're not, if Zoom is a bit of a scary new thing to you, don't panic about that. Just down the bottom here, if you move your cursor around the little mouse bit, you should see an option to say chat. Click on the chat and that will bring up your chat box. And that way you can ask questions of our artists uh, throughout the evening. So we are having a bit of a Q and A session for you this evening, but right now we should be joined by our artist, Sarah, Sarah, I keep saying Sarah, I'm so sorry. Sarah uh, Sherwood, who should be here. I'm gonna bring her in shortly. And we should also have, uh, fingers crossed by the magic of technology, we should have our uh, cellist, Emily Burridge. Emily should be there as well. Let's bring Emily in. I'm doing all this as well. Da, da, da. 
should be able, you should be able to. Well, we'll chat. To, oh, there you are, Emily. How are you? You're right. I'm gonna make sure you can unmute yourself as well. Yes. Brilliant. There Lovely. We it's all going so well. Uh, Sarah, how are you? Are you all right? I'm great, thanks. Yeah. Good. Now we're very tight on time, and we want to get straight into the presentation. But quickly, Sarah. Do you know what you're going to paint or are you just going to listen to Emily's music and just go with the flow? I have no idea. Oh, exciting. I, I like that. I um, kind of got a thought about some colours. I mix them ready okay. um, and I'm thinking a big sky, a big happy sky. Uh, but that's just that's where I'm going to start. <laughs> but that's Lovely. where I always work. I just let go, which is quite a challenge on camera. <laughs> but wish me luck. Well, you've got all these lovely people watching. You're all wishing you on there and waiting to see what you're going to create. But we need a brilliant piece of music. We need something very special to inspire you, Sarah, don't we? So for that this evening, we have invited her back. She was so popular last time. Emily, welcome back, Emily. Hi. It's it, really super to be here. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and Sarah um, actually requested a piece of music to accompany her. And um, it's that exceptional piece of music by J.S. Bach, uh, the first cello suite in G major. Brilliant, fantastic piece to choose. Uh, so uh, Emily is going to play and Sarah is going to paint. Just before you go, though, uh, Aid has just put in the chat, go, Sarah, you could do it. <laughs> You are you are an inspiration. There you go. That's what you want to hear. That'll 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 G you on. Won't yeah, that's the up. Yeah, fantastic. So now playing, uh, well, playing uh, G major suite by uh, J S Bach. We've got Emily Burridge and painting for us uh, this evening. We've got Sarah Sherwood. Do enjoy.
I was just caught up in the moment there. Absolutely incredible. And some of the comments, thank you, Emily. Emily, thank you. Round of applause. All the people out there, I'm sure, are, are applauding that fabulous music. And Sarah, just wow. I mean, the comments have been coming in. It's really lovely. I wanted to read some to you. Um, Benjamin Smith says, loving the colours. So we have got a Q&A now. So if you have got any questions, do put them in the chat there. But we'll, let's talk about the colours, because Benjamin loves the colours. Wow, why have you picked those colours? They're so whoa, vibrant, they're incredible. Um, I think when we were talking earlier about um, my art, uh, I mentioned I had a piece online which is called Pure Joy, and that, that spoke to my heart today. So when I was thinking about what to do, I just knew I had to start with that fresh turquoise. And I think, thank you, Emily, because that music really did lift my heart. And I love the rhythms in the music. So what I was, I could feel the, the angels kind of, the idea of angel wing skies coming through. And I don't know if you saw me using the palette knife, but I was kind of wiggling it to the music. So I thoroughly enjoyed that. And this felt the, like the shape of the cello here. So it's quite a, a feminine shape here. Um, so yes. Well, I'm interrupted, but I, I want to get through these comments. Uh, D Diana, I think it's Diana Lawman says, Love seeing the painting build so naturally and straight on with a palette knife, because she noticed. Um, see the energy flow with the music, the best way to paint. Do you think it is the best way to paint, Sarah? Definitely. I just like to let go and just go for it. I'm, I can listen to something really, really quiet. Um, I might do my prayers or I might be leaping around like a mad thing to Rasta, 
reggae and really got the music up loud. So I different paintings have different moods and many of the works have got different layers in. So I might review this, go back to it and add a little bit on the St Paul's. And this one has flowed beautifully. So thank you, Emily, again. Um, yeah. Incredible. Yeah, as I said, I want to get through all the comments here. So uh, lovely, uh, Julia, they're all compiling in now. Um, Steve says, Steve Yates says, looks amazing, Sarah. Uh, Julie Goodall says, that was mesmerizing. I think that's why I was sort of like watching it. And then, oh, you finished. Sorry. Um, you caught me off guard. Um, Amin says, lovely painting and music, but he wants to know what kind of paints do you use? Um, I work in oil on canvas and I use Griffin Alkid because they're quick drying. And then I use something called Liquin, which makes them flow and move quite quickly. Liquin, oh, explain that. Um, it's something, sorry, which is here. It's by um, Windsor and Newton, I think. And you just mix it with the paint and it, it makes it flow. So if you're using acrylic, you put water to it. With oils, you use this stuff. Right, brilliant. So, well, the thing about these uh, contemporary art fairs, people learn so many little techniques, little skills, and they hopefully take them away. And that's what it's all about. Look at that. Pa you, you could almost put that palette up on the wall, to be honest. <laughs> I love that. This is how this is how the liquid just absolutely. You can see this bit here on the palette. It absolutely glides, and you can make really, you know, just, it, it really makes the oil flow. Um, Madeline says, Emily, you have some groupies here. You've got some groupies uh, listening to Emily. They follow you around everywhere, but they're here as well. And they say they really enjoy the music as well, because we like to have a bit of a balance. So there we go. Um, oh, and Ju we did this last time, actually. We asked people to name your painting, and people have already jumped in. Maybe they remember this from last time. And Judith uh, Foster says the title could be Crescendo. Oh, I like that. Mm. I was actually thinking music in London, but I think she's actually taught me because crescendo is more pretty. I think as well, because recently, obviously, with the pandemic, I went into London and it was just wasn't London. Do you know what I mean? It was quite so to see your painting. It's almost like the dawn of, you know, the, the new dawn of this rainbow that we're kind of seeing and the new beginning. You know, I'm, I'm flowing. But I think, you know, it's absolutely stunning. Really, really lovely. Uh, piece. Um, oh, got questions are coming in. Your work feels uh, spiritual. Where do you get your inspiration? And that's from Steve Yates. Um, I pray to Jesus. I'm Christian. I wasn't oh, right. always. I was um, New Age spirituality. I was hippie. I was um, Earth Mother. I went through a 15 year journey. I ended up in Greece in the churches there and I felt an energy that was unbelievable. So now when I paint, um, I, I don't know if you noticed, but I cross myself at the beginning and then I just let my body go and, and go for it. Fantastic. And uh, we've got another suggestion. This is, as a, I think this has come from one of our candidates, I think, or one of our people uh, watching tonight. So I, I don't know the name, but they've said the heartbeat of London. As a I name. like that. I have got yeah. one called Heartbeat of London already. So oh, they're okay. in the flow. But yes, it is my heart. And that's what I feel that I want all of my work to give hope and peace and joy. And I know it's a material thing, but I want it to be like a window to another world or to uplift people. I, that's, that's what I hope for. And when I worked on this one, this blue kept coming through to use it. And I felt like I could feel the protection of... Um, Mary Mother of God around the St Paul's and I don't know if you can see here but this happened quite by accident but there's loads of tiny little crosses that happened in the reflection like sparkles and um, I, I, that's my favourite bit of the painting and then that's what made me think about the music as well. Well, Sarah, I was looking at your bio um, earlier today when I was uh, preparing. Yeah, I do prepare, honestly. And, uh, <laughs> and it's it's about, honestly, I do, I promise. Um, and I was fascinated to, about this dates that you put, special dates that you add in. Can you explain that? Ah, uh, yes. Sometimes, um, for instance, uh, recently I did a piece for someone that was a butterfly. And within there, I hid a special date that... Um, commemorated actually something sad but it could be something happy as well um and the reason that was a butterfly was so it was a treasured memory something beautiful 
Um, and the dates could be an anniversary, um, a birthday. I'm doing one at the moment, which is on commission for a 50th birthday. So oh. that painting is going to be called Celebration. And um, what I do is, I don't know if you noticed me, but I might work into the, the wet paint with the back of um, the palette knife. And then I might just write a, a date in here or here I've just put a little bit of texture. Um, and then that makes it really, really special, especially if when people having um, something made for them on commission. And thank you for this tonight because I so rarely get the chance just to paint because I'm pretty much busy with commissions for the last two years. That's, that's all I've worked on really. Well, our pleasure. Thank you. Now, of course, we've got Emily uh, there as well. Another one for you, Emily. We're trying to balance this up, but it says another of Emily's groupies. They, 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 they're here. They're ready for you. You better lock that dressing room door. Uh, I was carried away by her playing. Uh, it was uh, so wonderful to see Sarah work in time with Emily's music. So, yeah. So I want to ask you, Emily, um, was it Sarah picked that piece of music for you to play? Yes. Absolutely, um, because uh, we 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 met and we experimented, and um, and it's it's interesting that you you chose that piece because fortunately for me it's part of a concert program that I do. If you'd said another Bach suite, I'd have probably my hair would have stood on end a bit more. Um, it takes a certain amount of preparation because you have to. Uh, get yourself completely out of the way. And so you can't be thinking about it. It's got to be there. So I'm not reading the music while I do it, um, while I'm playing it. I, it's off by heart. It's, it's there in one's mind and body, in one's fingers. And, um, but it was really lovely because I was looking up and I was seeing this painting evolving. And then I recognized St. Paul's and uh, it gave one moment sort of, well, Bach always changes. It always changes depending on where you're playing and who you're playing it to. And so it's, um, so I was there, um, even though it's written music and um, not so much like last time where I was just flowing around with, with the painter. But I did do that today at the end because the bark, I, I came to the end of it, the, you know, the dance suite and um, of the dance movements rather. Um, amazing that you're painting that picture with all that history, because I was reading up about the, the G major suite today. And it's just rather extraordinary to think that what I was playing was written in the 1700s. And um, it was brought to, brought to light by a chance find by Pablo Casals, the late Pablo Casals, the cellist, in um, 1890. And the original score of the Bark Suites, there is an enigma around them for the cello. Um, the original score has never been found. Um, but he found a score of the Bark Suites in a bookshop in Barcelona and actually recorded the G major suite. The first recording ever was made in 1918 in um, Abbey Road Studios. Um, so that was amazing really. Um, so when I came to the end, when I came to the end of it and, and also there is another, there is another movement. There's a movement called the jig, which it finishes with. But it was too, when I saw where uh, Sarah had gotten, gone to, um, I thought rather than going into that, um, so I went into a, one of my own compositions and then um, did some improvisation. <laughs> Well, we you know we couldn't tell, honestly. I think we, there's always that thing, isn't it? You, you didn't just want to stop. Uh, you had to carry on, but I think you picked the right sort of music to carry on uh, to finish off Thank the piece. You. Thank you so much, Emily Burridge. Thank you, Emily, uh, for your beautiful yes, playing. Sir. And I do hope you return again next time. And Sarah as well. I know you've got two pieces in. I'm going to quickly mention them so that when the site we're all up and live, uh, pure joy and real gold. Is that right? Yeah? Yes, that's right. 
So you're going to have to go onto the website and see what those lovely pieces look like. And they are available at the moment. But I have to say, whenever we um, have an artist on painting live, they tend to just go like that because people do want to get their hands on them as well. Thanks again, Sarah. Thank you so much uh, for this evening. It's been an absolute joy to have you here. And thanks again to Emily. And again, thanks to everybody for all your lovely comments there as well. In fact, Amim Adef finishes this perfectly. He says, well done, Emily and Sarah. Thank you both. I couldn't have put it better myself. Thank you. That's uh -huh. lovely. All <laughs> right, then. So um, I will let you uh, disappear off now as we get ready for our next uh, two uh, guests in fact uh, to join us in fact we have well it, it's interesting because we we wanted to have a little insight into uh, their studio really and when I say studio it's actually the why not studio so why not indeed we should have Beverly Sweetum and Greg Ward we should have them joining us very shortly Hi, indeed I can hear you that's Hi, bring you down for a chat there you go uh hello there we go. I was, I was looking at Beverly. I was like, that's not Beverly. And then I saw Beverly underneath. <laughs> so you've both got Beverly written on, but that is absolutely fine. We don't need to worry about that. <laughs> How are we doing? <laughs> Who is the real Beverly? Step forward. Uh, welcome, guys. Thank you very much for joining us uh, this evening. Um, you are going to do a, a little bit of a talk about, well, tell us, first of all, uh, we'll start with Greg. Why, wh what we have that? why, why not? Why is it called that? What was the idea behind that? For exactly that reason, why not? I came to art a little bit later in life and um, I've always been an artist, but not in a conventional sense. And I came to art a little bit later and I've always said to things, but well, why not? Why can't I do that? Why can't you do that? Put the positivity onto other people, why can't you? And it just seemed to be a very fitting name for the art company, why not? I know, and I can't stop saying it. I keep meaning not to say it, and I go, why not? Exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. going to be memorable. I like it. Uh, Greg, you said your style is very, um, I suppose, out there, sort of a bit different. So can you yes. explain what you mean by that? What I mean is, 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 like Sarah before, I don't set off with a conventional idea. Most artists are scared to death of a blank canvas. I actually love a blank canvas because that's, that's creativity. And I just do whatever happens to come into my mind at that moment. I don't have a particular set style because I just do whatever I feel emotional about. I paint emotionally. So therefore, it can be really dark. It can be really happy. It can be joyful. It can be sad. But I always try and put a positive, colourful element into it. And we can see some of those colours behind you, in fact. So um, have, you got, have, you, have you got any... Uh, paintings or pieces you could show us that are going to be in the uh, that are available on the on the website. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no problem. Two seconds. What I just oh, while you do that, I'll have a quick chat with Beverly. Hi, you Beverly. Yeah. How you doing? Hi. I've got a. Sorry, I've just seen Greg's shirt. We'll talk about that in a second. Oh, Beverly. Wow. Uh, wow, I know he's upstage us all this evening. I need to get something like that. Beverly, I've been on your Instagram uh, page, which you can find through Contemporary Art Fairs uh, Instagram, and wow, your artwork your work with your uh, your wildlife your dogs your cats all those sort of things the the realism is incredible absolutely incredible is that always the style that you've painted in um yeah pretty much um i'm trying my best to try and get a bit more washy i love that last you know sarah's work because it was all washy and i wish i could do that but i paint with the smallest tiniest brushes uh, i try and get all the textures and i try to get everything really really like you know the attention to details everything for me um but that's you know I get all the fur and everything really spot on I wish I could be a bit more washy like I mean I love the way that he works but it's uh yeah I'm a very to detail artist well I love the hairs and the, the rabbits that you did on on the on the page as well in fact if you look on the chat now guys there is a, a link to Beverly's work and Greg's works there. I think we just saw Greg's work in a whirlwind there. I think he just spun the camera around. We've got to take it all yeah. in, and that's it. Um, so I'll go sure. back to Greg. I, first of all, the shirt. Loving the shirt, Greg. Very nice. <laughs> Got to be bright and wonderful. Love it. We love it. Um, tell us about the first piece. That, and Beverly, while I'm doing this, have you got anything that you can line up for us to have a look at? 
I'll show you the back wall in a minute. Perfect, yeah. lovely. Well, I'll have a chat with Greg and then we'll come to you uh, in mm -hmm. a second, Beverly. Uh, so, Greg, show us the first piece that's available to buy on the website. <laughs> We it's have it's so interactive, isn't it? Blue, blue shot, oh, which is just here. There's such vibrant, fabulous colours. I love it. Yeah, that's it. And the whole idea is to be able to make you smile. Yeah, that that's the point. That's the whole point. And there's one here just on the back. And that's my whole effigy with all all of this with the art. It's just the fact to make people smile. And what's that one called? That sort of explosion of colour. What's that one? Yeah, explosive sunset over the sea. There you go. I could be an art critic. I could do this. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then we have another one that's on the website as well, which is walking from darkness into light. I don't know if you can see that properly with the footsteps. With the feet. Yeah, the footsteps. Yeah, starting, starting from a very dark, dark place and ending up in a very light and bright, colourful place. Which is very much like what lots of us are going through at the moment, isn't it? With this, exactly. You can literally see this time that we're all... We were talking before we went live tonight, we were talking to lots of people about the excitement of you know, being able to finally get out and, you know, see our friends, see our family. And, you know, have you, with, with the lockdown, have you had a chance to really do a lot of painting, uh, Greg? Yes. Yeah. 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 I've been in the studio pretty much full time and uh, I'm at it all the time. It, it's just, I can't stop. It's just, I feel funny because I'm sitting in the studio and not painting now. Oh, well, don't let it stop you. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, the, the, your, your footprints one, is that is that kind of what that's talking about? The kind of this darkness that we've all been in at the moment? Is that, yes, is that what you're talking about? 100%. That's yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Is that, you know, with all the lockdown and the restrictions and things, some people are in a very dark place. But there's always hope. There's always positivity. It doesn't matter what, what it is. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. Hence the top. Hence the light is to the top. Because we're always heading upwards, never downwards. I love that, Greg. Thank you so much. I'm going to talk to Beverly now. Beverly, surrounded by your animals, have you got a favourite? Because I was, as I say, I was looking through your work, and I just, I wouldn't have a favourite. They're all incredible. I love the owl as well. I saw the owl as well. That jumped I'm going to just, if I just spin you around, I can just show you. I've got, I've, my husband created me a little art gallery in my junk room, so just bear me two that. seconds. <laughs> So it's like it reminds me when we used to watch the gallery, you know, with uh, Tony Hart, and uh, yes, we should have some this nice is music. One of my favourites at the moment. Um, That's the one I love. I just love it. it. There's so much character in the face, and he's yeah. So do do you go out and about, to, or are they all in your head? No, I work with um, a number of wildlife photographers, and I um, work with them. And if I see a picture that I like, I that I want to use for reference, then. Um, I mean, I took these photos for, for these pictures here, um, but, um, and the bees are there, all my photos that I use for reference, but I do work with photographers as well to um, be able to use their references, and then I let them have a print at the end of it. The four in the middle are the ones that I put up for sale on uh, your website. Great. So we've got the little grasshopper at the bottom there. That one as well, the, the grasshopper. Yeah, I haven't got that on your site, I don't think. These, the puffins are on there, I think. The puffins are stunning, I love those. Look at that. Yeah, the puffins oh, are cute. And um, we've got, I'm sorry about my light. That's yeah. all right, these things happen. We were trying yeah, to- Yeah, we've got the curly gossip there. And the stag. And we've got the chicken. Oh, yeah. And the owl, which is on there. Yeah, owl. And there's a little bit of work that I'm, I'm still not finished, but I'm working up for that to for the Windsor show. Right. Coming up. Um, the horses. That's a little sneak peek, isn't it? I like it. a little sneak peek of the Windsor show coming up. Yes. And hopefully, Beverly, hopefully is, we'll be we can meet in person at the Windsor show. Oh, that would be so lovely. Wouldn't that to be meet incredible? People. All our lovely people watching. Hopefully, oh, you can yeah, all do to it. get them talking. It's this is my um this is me just channeling my um in a magpie, I'm afraid, anything sparkly, because I do mo um, mosaic work as well. So yeah, that's my quick tour. And you like elephants, so we can't, go, we can't go into the elephants thing now, but you like elephants, no, I, saw no. on your, I saw on your Insta those ele elephants. Are you painting those elephants? Is that what you were doing? Um, it's a community project, yeah. That's the one. Really big community stuff. project that's coming off soon, yeah. 
great work. We'll look out for that as well. But mainly, we're going to head to the uh, website. So let's put those links up again for me, Effie, so we can uh, have a link to Beverly's work and Greg's work. Um, so Greg, just remind us again of those pieces that are uh, that are going to be on the site as well. So that one behind you, that explosion one. Yep. We have um, also we have uh, charcoal lilies. Okay, so you do charcoal as well. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I work in multimedia. Literally, I stand in front of a piece of paper or or canvas, and I'll pick up whatever happens to be around me, and I'll do it with that. There's no fixed plan to me at all. <laughs> I I just I just go for it. You pop I'll, on your shirt and you're away. Well, yeah, that's it. You see, look at the state of me. Look, this was clean when I started. Of course it was. And, yeah, or, you know, if we'll go to animals and we'll go to sort of something like hummingbirds, but in a bit of an abstracty style. Oh, lovely colours, yeah. It, exactly. That, that's the most important thing for me is the colour, is colours. Um, and which, you know, makes a happy feeling. It's sort of like this one here in the back. How can you be unhappy with the colour yellow? It's How can you not? Smile, but yellow. You know, whatever mood you happen to feel in, it's got to put a smile to your face, isn't it? And that has to be what art is all about. It definitely does. And as you know, tomorrow we've got our full, our, this is our little sort of taster tonight, and it's lovely you could join us for this, but tomorrow we've got the big thing. Are you going to be joining us tomorrow to see what other artists are up to, whatever yeah. else they're doing as well? Uh, yep, definitely. Fantastic, <laughs> brilliant stuff. Well, thank you very much uh, for talking to us. Uh, Greg and uh, Beverly of the Why Not Art and Why Not and Why Not. Thank you very much. Uh, you. They will be watching along tomorrow and I hope you guys uh, will be uh, too. It's been an absolute brilliant little taster this evening. Uh, thank you for all your comments as well. Um, Diana Lawman has said, lovely work both, very different. Uh, but fabulous. The expression in the animals are stunning. I know that's what I was saying. And so realistic. Loving the foxes, uh, Beverly and the stag. And then she also says she's very balanced. So thank you, Diana. She says, I love the explosion work uh, from Greg. Uh, more of those. She says more of those. Um, I, she probably loved your shirt as well, Greg. Greg's gone, but uh, we loved uh, Greg's shirt. I have to say, I might have to get one of those uh, myself. But it has been an absolutely uh, brilliant night. Don't forget, if you haven't done it yet, if you haven't gone on to the uh, website yet, I, I'm waiting to see if we're all live and ready for that. Uh, let me just check with Effie, um, who is my director this evening, making sure that uh, things are flowing well. Also, guys, I hope you've enjoyed our little taste of this evening. We have got a fantastic evening, uh, well, day, in fact, planned for you tomorrow. Uh, my notes are all over the place. Hang on, give me a second. We've got so much going on tomorrow. We've got lots of uh, live demonstrations. We've got talks. We've got more music and art being painted together. We've got exciting uh, prizes to be won as well. And all the fun starts at two o'clock. The link is in the chat right now. Um, the website, we are having a bit of a, an issue with this evening, um, which is a good thing because it means so many people have clicked on it that we're having a bit of a problem. But I have just heard it's official. We are now open. The website is open, which means you can have uh, spend the next couple of hours uh, with maybe a little glass of wine, listening to some nice music and browsing through the fabulous artwork, including um, some of our fabulous uh, artists and performers uh, this evening. Their art is featured on there as well. And we've got exciting prizes for you tomorrow. Don't forget the fun starts at two o'clock. The link is there. Thank you to all our artists and uh, performers uh, this evening. Thank you to our sponsor, Lock Locksley Arts, uh, who are our big sponsor uh, for this event. And thank you for joining us. How many of you out there, before we go, are gonna join us tomorrow? Let's have a yes in the uh, chat box. And it's very important we talk about these uh, uh, prizes that are up for grabs. We aren't just gonna pick names out that have registered and give you, oh, thank you, Richard, uh, that are gonna, uh, Mac's gonna join us as well. Hiya, Mac. We like to give a shout out to people um, that you have to be there to win the prizes. Now, I was gonna give you a little taster. Look at that, that's one of the prizes there. I shouldn't have shown you that, but I am being very sneaky. That's just one of the fabulous prizes that you could be winning tomorrow, but you do have to be there. What I mean by that is 
uh, once you've registered, make sure you join us because lots of people register and then forget. So pop it in your diary. Make sure you know uh, that you're joining us from two o'clock tomorrow. Um, we'll send you the link is, of course, on the website. You can link through there join in and see us live just here with lots of live demonstrations and lots of things for you to look forward to. But